Okay, we're in section seven, typography. Linux from scratch, version 11.1. .1. To make things easier to follow, there are a few typographical conventions used throughout this book. This section contains some examples of the typographical format found throughout Linux from scratch. Dot forward slash configure prefix equals user. This form of text is designed to be typed exactly as seen. That's in this gray bar here. Unless otherwise noted in the surrounding text. It is also used in the export explanation sections to identify which of the commands is being referenced. In some cases, a logical line is extended to two or more physical lines with a backslash at the end of the line. A logical line is extended to two or more physical lines with a backslash. Okay, so the backslash means that line extends, I guess. Note that the backslash must be followed by immediate return. Other white space characters, like spaces or tab characters, will create incorrect results. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what he's doing with this. This form of text, fixed width text, shows screen output, usually as the result of commands issued. This format is also used to show file names, such as etc ldsoconf Emphasis. This form of text is used for several purposes in the book. Its main purpose is to emphasize important points or items. Why they put that link there, I don't know. This format, oh, is used for hyperlinks, both within the LFS community and to external pages. It includes how-tos, download locations, and websites. This format is used when creating configuration files. The first command tells the system to create the file LFS etc group from whatever is typed on the following lines until the sequence end of file EOF is encountered. Therefore, this entire section is generally typed as seen. Replace text. This format is used to encapsulate text that is not to be typed as seen or for copy and paste operations. So I assume this not is not for copy and paste. Optional test in these brackets. This format is used to encapsulate text that is optional. This format is used to refer to a specific manual page. Notice the parentheses 5. The number inside the parentheses indicates a specific section inside the manuals. For example, PASSWD has two manual pages. Per LFS installation instructions, those two manual page, man pages will be located at user share man man1 forward slash passwd dot one or dot l and user share man man5 passwd dot five. Mm. Two manual pages. Okay, when the book uses PASSWD5, it is specifically referring to 
user share man man five p a s s w d dot five dot m a n space p a s s w d oh man space p a s s w d will print the first manual man page it finds that mass it matches p a s s w d which will be user share man man one p a s s w d dot one for this example you will need to run man five p a s s w d in order to read the page specified note that most man pages do not have duplicate page names in different sections therefore man program name is generally sufficient so let's look at that right so if i do man p a s s w d we get that q to quit now if i do man 5 p a s s w d Notice the PASSWD5 here. File formats and conversions. While the original one had something different in parentheses one. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on time? Fine. All right, next section. This book is divided into the following parts. Part 1, Introduction. Part 1 explains a few important notes on how to proceed with the LFS installation. This section also provides meta information about the book. Part 2, Preparing for the Build. Part 2 describes how to prepare for the building process, making a partition, downloading the packages, and compiling temporary tool tools. Part 3, building the LFS cross tool chain and temporary tools. Part 3 provides instructions for building the tools needed for constructing the final LFS system. Part 5, building the LFS system. Part 4 guides the reader through the building of the LFS system, compiling and installing all the packages one by one, setting up the boot scripts, and installing the kernel. The resulting Linux system is the foundation on which other software can be built to expand the system as desired. At the end of this book, there is an easy-to-use reference listing all of the programs, libraries, and important files that have been installed. Part 5, Appendices. Part 5 provides information about the book itself, including acronyms and terms, acknowledgments, package dependencies, a listing of LFS boot scripts, license for the distribution of the book, and a comprehensive index of packages, programs, libraries, and scripts. Okay, so the book is Introduction, Preparing for the Build, Building the LFS Cross Toolchain and Temporary Tools, Building the LFS System, and the Appendices. Preface 9, Errata and Security Advisories. The software used to create an LFS system is constantly being updated and enhanced. Security warnings and bug fixes may become available after the LFS book has been released. To check whether the package versions or instructions in this release of LFS need any modifications to accommodate security vulnerabilities or other bugs fixes, please visit so this is Arata 11.1. In addition, um, 
before process, proceeding with your build. You should note any changes shown and apply them to the relevant section of the book as you progress with building the LFS system. In addition, the Linux from scratch editors maintain a list of security vulnerabilities discovered after a book was released. To check whether there are any active security vulnerabilities, please visit uh, LFS advisories. Hmm. So what we'll do here is um, let's make a another folder and um, we'll call it errata and security and we'll put that in the LFS folder. There we go. Now we'll bookmark this page in errata and security and the advisories in um, this page. Now we are doing 11.1. So let's look at the 11.1 .1 advisory. Linux kernel date, uh, March 15th, medium. Linux 5.16.14 workarounds for hardware vulnerabilities named branch history injection have been added. These vulnerabilities may be exploited to cause sensitive information leakage. To work around these vulnerabilities, update to at least Linux 5.16.14. Um, or and they list the LTS stable kernels and disable unprivileged BPF syscall. Also, um, March 9th, severity high. In Linux, since 5.8, a local privilege escalation vulnerability known as Dirty Pipe has been discovered. To fix this, update to at least Linux 5.16.11. Okay, so um, open SSL March 18th. A bug which can cause OpenSSL to loop forever when parsing a crafted certificate was fixed in version 3.0.2 and 3.1.1n. Update to at least OpenSSL 3.02. Um, blah, blah, blah. Vim. One vulnerability causing heap-based buffer overflow. And uh, they spelled the word crashing wrong here. Crossing <laughs> have been fixed in Vim 8.2.4567. To fix them, update to Vim 8.2.4567 or later. And another Vim uh, date March 2nd. Four vulnerabilities which cause crashes under certain circumstances have been fixed. Okay, so those are the security vulnerabilities. Next section. All right, the next is the introduction. We'll do that in the next episode, Lord willing.